So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live Thursday stream recorded for Ustream.tv and also recorded for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. I'm working in my beautiful birthday book um, Linda Ravenscroft's Fairy and Fantasy Art. It's on 300 DSM paper so it means we can be that little bit wetter and a bit freer. So I've been using round brushes that are kind of little fat brushes that hold a, quite a bit of colour um, but they're to a point so you it's a bit like having a, a perpetual marker. You've got some really nice flowing colour but it's not kind of a water brush where it's a whoosh of just lots and lots of water. So you have a lot of control over this way of working. So this is part three. Um, I'm working on the toadstools. Um, I've turned a little bit of darkness in but I'm doing a basic colour um, and then you can go back over it and I love the fact of course because it's on this paper nothing's happening to the back you can go back in it work over it work quite wet it's working really nicely I've part one got my hydras fine art watercolors out and drip them into a, a color palette of kind of light to dark um, and I've made uh, some colors up so that I've got some nice ready reds and I've got some nice greens. I did put a thalo green out and a thalo blue and I haven't used them but I've used the the two blues uh, which are French ultramarine and cobalt blue. I've used Hansi yellow and gamboge and I've tried to make the gamboge a little bit lighter so I've made it almost like a cadmium yellow. That's gamboge which is kind of a tangerine colour. So this one is four parts Hansa to one Gamboge and it's it's a it's a warm yellow it's a sun yellow it's not a cold yellow so with these two different yellows and the two different blues I've got quite a lot of greens going on so we've got some olives and we've got some pea greens and some grass greens and some kind of really dark forest greens so it's quite nice to mix your own colours and the in the top there is I don't think I used it. There's a black and a white which I haven't used. Um, I don't think I took it out. There is a there is a viridian. Oh, I thought there was a viridian green. Maybe there isn't. Maybe I didn't have a viridian green. It must be a thalo green, and I haven't used it. It's in there. Um, so I'll probably use those maybe a bit later. Perhaps the, the dress might be phthalo green and phthalo blues. Quite bright, vivid colours. I haven't quite decided what to do with her. And because I'm a bit of a chicken, I've, I've picked on the things I know what I want to do. So I've got some nice bright um, leaves. I've got some berries. I've done the toadstools and I've done the ivy leaves because I know what colours they are. So I'm a bit of a chicken. But it means that when I've done all these toadstools and all these ivy... I'll then decide whether I want her dress to be bright or to be dull or to be two colours. I want to know whether I do the, the, the wings bright or not. Now, if I rush in now and do it, and then I do everything else, I might think, oh, gee, I wish I'd not done that colour now because I've got too much red because I'm going to have all these red. But if I do all the background first, then her colour is going to be the best colour She's the emphasis, she's the, the viewing point, she's where you want to look. Although we don't look at vanishing points, there are some there are some invisible vanishing points. All these little fronds here are sending you to her face. All the wings, the straight lines are sending you to her. All these lines here, these lines here are all pointing to this area. So she's got to be the most important. So by the time I've got round here, I'll know where to put the dress and then the skin tone. But if you go into now and say, oh, I want a bright pink and purple dress, when we get the reds on there, it might look totally dis, dis, dis out of proportion colour-wise. So it's nice sometimes to think, well, play safe, we'll do what we know, We'll start with how we want to do the background and then we'll finish on her. 
because she is the focal point. And vanishing points are normally lines that artists use for buildings, but even the mushroom, the toadstool, is pointing in. All the toadstools are pointing up, so we're not looking down here. We're looking here, because this spike brings us here. The wings bring us here. The wings keep us in. At this side, we've got all these spikes, so we know that this area is what we want to be looking at. And ideally, it would be her face. Um, so that keeps you into, it keeps you into the picture and very clever artists do that. So I have put, I have made uh, with the, with the, the four reds that I have, and I've made a kind of a pinky red and I kind of like that colour. So hopefully I can make it again um, and I'm going to fill the toadstools in. So I've been using round brushes, um, different sizes. The Art Master Pearl number no. six is quite a good size. It holds a decent amount of colour, but you can get some fine ed edges on there as well. So just make sure that it's clean. Um, so I'm using a baby wipe because I love washing the brush out. And then you can see that there's definitely nothing coming out of there. You just have to keep it away from your brush, uh, from your paper, because it will crinkle it. I've got a piece of photocopy paper that I've been scribbling my colours. Especially doing the dark reds, I've been just double checking that that's what I want. Um, and I'm playing about with a palette. So it, this is hydrous watercolours and they will dry. So I can use them again. They're not wasted. So it was a tight Yorkshire lass, I kind of like that. So I was just doing the toadstools and I'd been playing about with the brown. So it wasn't the Van Dyke brown, it was, I think it was the nuts. There's a burnt umber and there is a lighter brown. I can put my hand on it. Venetian brown. So I think that one is Venetian brown and it's a little bit purplier or it's a, it's a bit warmer. So that's the cold one and, it, and it's just that little bit nicer. So I chose that for the stems. So I'm putting on kind of a light coat of this. And again, I've got a bit of yellow in there just to lighten it up a bit. And I can work quite wet, which I keep forgetting. I'm not used to this. I keep forgetting I can work quite wet with this um, for the toadstools. So again, um, I'm leaving the stems going to be darker than the little fringe or fron, whatever it's called. So we could have a nice highlight on that one. So we can do this two ways. We can brush on the colour as fast as possible so we don't get many lines. It's just a smooth. And then we can kind of just manipulate that to one side. And you can do that with watercolour and you can make tones and shades without really trying. Now, I haven't quite gone up to the line with that one. And I haven't quite gone up the line with that one, so there's a bit of a gap there. So I'm just going to put a very quick, thin layer. And again, I keep forgetting I can be so wet because I've never, I haven't done this before. So you forget. Um, I haven't played with watercolours on watercolour paper for a long time. I've had a couple laid out. Uh, stretched canvases ready, stretched watercolour paper ready, but I hadn't really been a bit too frightened to do it, so maybe this will be a little bit more. And I've just found the back of that stem or the bottom of that stem. So, again, by doing little things like this, you find other things out and you decide things as you're going along. So, this is below here, and I'd left that I'd forgotten. But now that pops that mushroom forward. So I need to do that darker. 
otherwise it won't do that. So I'll very quickly do this and then I'll, I'll zoom in and you can see how we make them more rounded than just flat. So thank you for joining me. Thank you girls and guys and everybody for joining me live. Stream, um, stream live stream Thursday. I try to stream every Thursday, nine o'clock till six o'clock. London Greenwich Mean Time. And if allowed, because <laughs> sometimes the equipment plays up, I try to record. Um, but I think I've got about six. 580 videos. I mean, I'm not quite up to 600 yet. And I think I've been going about a year now. The first videos I used to edit, but they took a long time. Um, and I used to edit every cough out and every Alfie bark out. Um, and every erm out. And I think there's hundreds of erms, so apologies. But this is possibly the easiest way for me so uh, I have to apologize for the live but live is brilliant because you can ask a question instantly whereas sometimes you have to wait a bit for replies I do try to reply but I don't always get there um, as soon as I can so I think I've got every toadstool <laughs> you have to sometimes you always miss one so there will be one or two I've missed always I'm going to clean the brush and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make these mushrooms a bit rounder, if we can say that. So I'll, I'll pan in a bit. So you can see this one, I did an extra bit of a layer there to create a shadow. Um, and I did one there, but it, it wasn't purpose. By the time I got to down here, this colour had kind of decided it's had enough. So I'm going to just a damp brush to pick up this brown. Oops, and I think it's the wrong brown I've picked up. I'm just looking at this. I think this is actually... Again, I can always test it. No, that was the nuttier brown, so I didn't want that when I wanted the cooler brown, so I was on the right the right brown. And I did mix a bit of yellow in it just to lighten it up a little bit. So you can do this two ways. You can go over again underneath. And we'd want the highlight on that side. But of course down here it wants to be very dark. Sorry, the bunnies have woken up and it's drinking time. So I am in my new studio but it's shared with the bunnies. And because I've put that one darker, it's made this one pop out. And I did like that cooler colour, but I think I'm going to lose that. So some of these are going to be kind of fairly dark, and then some will have a little bit of a highlight. But if you want to keep, this is the time you keep your highlights, because if you don't keep them now... they will disappear but it's just to give them a bit of difference between one and the other now we can always go back in them we can build up we can do strong solid color we don't have to do a watercolor because of course we're not playing with thin colors um, I thought that was the yes, that was the pink. See, you always have to remember to make a lot of this red. 
because you can you can't always make it again. So now that looks a bit pinky, does that to me? I don't know why it does. So I'm just going to put this red on. Now I did earlier, a lot earlier, weeks ago, I did put some masking fluid on here and I've been trying to do this particular book for a while but I haven't been brave enough so So I put the the masking fluid on and left it on and it's gone a bit pink because the masking fluid had a pink tint to it. So masking fluid is fine if it's tinted as long as you just leave it on for a short time. Now as it happens it doesn't matter because the, it is red anyway but it would have been better without. So I think I used the red but I mean you can spend weeks, years on a watercolour if you want accuracy, if you want it perfect um, and of course this paper will do that, it's 300 GSM, it will, you could play in it forever and it, it would never, well I won't say never but it, it'll take a long time before it disintegrates. So I'm putting a flat colour down. Oh hi Diamond, welcome to Bonnie's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Just finally got round to starting this wonderful colour book. Um, and it's only because I've just been afraid to do it, which is ridiculous because you know it's a colour book to be coloured and you shouldn't be scared of it. But I was so I think I was just so frightened of messing it up um, and that stopped me what I said about the backstroke never behaves itself or rarely behaves itself shall I say and you know that the colours are getting a bit thinner when it does that because it starts to, 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 to scratch a bit. So if you're really scared about your book, photocopy a page and other than that you have to be just brave. What are you eating, Bunny? So, we're waiting for some new cages for the bunnies. What are you tromping? Tromping something. I think I may have to make some more of that red. <laughs> I hope I can remember how to make it. I think it was deep red rose one drop I 
and that was the orange, that was the red, and then we had the red, cadmium red. And this is very vibrant and I've got a funny feeling that that's a bit too pink, isn't it? Do you think it's just too pink? It's nice but it's not the same pink, but you do have to shake these. So you don't have to do much to this for the grayscale because it's well behaved. Just pull this out to the side. <laughs> um, I don't know, Suzanne. <laughs> Probably not. No. Probably not. <laughs> oh, now it looks a bit ready the other way. But let's have a look. This is the difference. This is full strength. This is full strength hydrus. And this is a loaded brush. If it's four o'clock, it's tea time for Alfie, so he barks constantly. So it doesn't matter whether he's not in the room, you can still hear him. So thanks for stopping by guys, I hope you're all okay, hope the weather's not too bad where you are. Oh hi Piccolo, and we're using the Hydras, this is part three, I am recording, this is part three of uh, Hydras Fine Art Watercolours. Um, and I have set one with a couple of other extra colours, but in part one of the video, I um, I showed how I set the palette up so that I would have a, a fairly decent kind of... I think the problem is I need a smaller brush because <laughs> I need a smaller brush. Messing about with a big, big, big brush. Because if you go over these little dots, they're a pest to get back. Oh, there's the boy. <laughs> there's your boy, Aunt Suzanne. There's the bad boy. See what I mean about, it's a fat round brush, but it goes to a point. So always have a look at your brushes. So a good round brush is round in its shape, but the bristles go to a point. So that means you've got 
the ability to hold the colour in the brush but you also have full control over it oh well you should have if you don't go <laughs> you should uh, you should have I'm making a bit of a pig zero of this today there we go and I found I think that's one behind there actually but I'm not quite sure if it is and that is a bit small for this brush three sizes are good small medium and large and then a fine liner a very fine liner brush is preferable and that gives you everything you need for a particular page so you if you have big spaces you use a big brush little spaces a little brush now that is just for watercolor paper so we've got all our little mushrooms done I think these are pebbles I thought at first they were lying down mushrooms but I think they're pebbles <laughs> and I'm just going to do this one I'm going to put that there because it's full of color and I don't want to get rid of it Oh, what does Suzanne say about them? Oh yes, they, they are. I think I found mine at a local shop. Now they're £5 a bottle. And again, it's I think they're about £50 or £60 for a set. Set 1, 2 and 3 each. £50 is £50, £60. Each. But the trick is you don't do that. The trick is you buy your six colours. You buy, there is actually the Hansa Yellow, there is a bit of a, Gamboge is a gorgeous colour but I wouldn't have chose it, it's only there because it was in the set. Um, you want something like a Cadmium Yellow, a Sun Yellow, a Warm Yellow, Hansa Yellow is the cold one, there's the Cadmium Red which I have here which is... Uh, What's it called? It's called Brilliant Cad Red, and then I would buy the Elysian Crimson, and I would make my own colours. So, I think. Unless there's one hiding, I think I've got them all. So I'm going to have a bit of a play with that brown because I want to. Sorry, the bunnies are. <laughs> the bunnies having a drink. Bunny's having a drink. So I've re wet this um, brown with a touch of yellow and just kind of. You can do this with washes, and the beauty of this paper is you can use washes. Um, you want we want a bit of dark going somewhere, and then a bit of light. Now I've lost that an initial colour, but I'm not really bothered. I can cool it down if I want to. Yes, please, darling. Thank you. Is Alfie having his tea? Yes. Oh. Okay. Do you want tea or coffee? Um, tea, please, darling. So, if Alfie's good, we'll have an Alfie come in a bit. Okay. What time? About five, I think. About five. Mhm. Mm we'll have an Alfie come. <laughs> Bless my happy. You just. Right. 
I want a little bit of dark green into that brown because I want this to be kind of really dark because I want it to pop the other one out and it won't do that. Now you can put layers on it and fronds on it and all sorts of other things if you want. But to build up this under here. Now you can put the colour on and you can leave it. And I've just oh, just mixed a bit of green in there. And it seems to have darkened it quite nice. Oops, sorry. But this is what you can do. This is how I work in oils, acrylics. It's just build, keep building up colour and colour. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, yes, Suzanne. Yeah, there's there's a hydrus, and then there's. Oh, just bear with me. Somebody told me what it was called earlier. There's a hydras and then there's um with me. Um oh my goodness, what are they called? What are they called? Is Oh, I've forgotten what they're called. There is, um, there's some other colours also made by Dr. Martins in the same colour bottles, but they're not Hydra's pure watercolours. They are kind of a, maybe an ink base. And they're not the same. They're not light fast and they're not professional. Um, and I think they're either the same price or just a little bit cheaper but not much. Um, but because a, dro a couple of drops goes a long way, I, I think they're kind of okay. And again, as a tight Yorkshire lass, I, I like the fact that you know there's, I'm using one or two drops to make quite a good palette of colours but you know for goodness sake don't buy the full set just buy six colours and make your own and if you like them then you buy more I always find that's the easiest thing Yes, they have inks. There is um, there is another one, and I just can't for the life of me think what it's called. Somebody said, somebody posted it earlier, um, and again, you can bring some green into here for kind of a greeny. And get some... nice shadows going up and of course you can do that because we've got we can wet this as many times as we want and we're never going to do any damage oh, really. not too much damage shall we say and of course that green is going to lend itself to some Kind of nice grungy work underneath. And you can put texture on there. You can put all sorts of things. I think this might be a nice colour. 
and maybe a little bit browner to do this section here I hope I'm in frame but then you can just keep on building and building and building and building and my hubby's wonderful he's done all the washing and ironing while I've been doing this Bless his little socks. So we have this joke that I bet he didn't think he'd been married somebody ten years younger and he didn't expect to be running around after her. I think he thought he'd get somebody to run after him. <laughs> and they're little toadstools. So we can build some kind of right grungy down here and then kind of really have maybe some highlights on her knee and here. So I haven't done the fronds yet and I, I do fancy a fawn, a fawn colour. So I'm just going to have a bit of yellow over there and it's probably the wrong yellow. But now I'm actually playing in the other I'm playing in the other. Oh, I like that one. It's not pinky form. But because it was. Because it was that. It's just got that little bit of colour. If I don't like it, I can get rid of it. But it's just that bit lighter. So it should look okay. And again, I'm going to... That's the palest colour. All the other colours are going to midge into that. So that's the palest one. And it allows me then to, to go darker now. That's going to be the palest colour. Depending on where it is. Oh, I haven't done the shadows on my little mushrooms. I can put my hand on there to be a bit careful. I usually like to work top to bottom because I'm terrible for putting my hands on things, but I think and it does look a bit too yellow, but it it isn't. It's um it's a straw colour. And it's a straw colour. I don't know if you can see it any better. It does look a little bit light there. <laughs> iridescent. Are they called are they called iridescent? So, oh that's quite good. A cheap set of hydra. There is a different set of hydras and they are called Ooh, um, uh, there is a cheaper set of watercolours in a bottle. Um, but I said just buy six. Just buy. Don't buy the full set. Just buy six, because I wouldn't have bought the full set if I'd have seen them on their own. I'd have bought a pinky red, an orangey red. I would have bought a, um, a light lemon yellow. I would have bought a warm yellow. I would have bought a, um, a cerulean blue. I wouldn't have bought a cobalt blue. I would have bought a cerulean blue, and I would have bought um, the ultramarine. And I would have made all my own colours from there. In fact, I might do that next time I go to Manchester. I haven't been. I've missed, the last few times they've been. I've, it's been. It's too uncomfortable for me in the wheelchair. So I haven't been with them because they think it's great fun to bounce me about, and and I really don't like it. It's just too uncomfortable. So there's a shop called Fred Olson, and you can buy them individually. Now that's. A paler colour. So it might just tone those down a bit. Oops, I made a bit of a boo boo there. I did actually quite like that highlight though. I did like that bit of a highlight.
I kind of like that highlight. It's kind of nice. It shows that it is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Just bear with me two seconds. Let me just see if I can. Now, I do want the liner for this because I need a fine, my number 10 0 um, liner, De La Rowney liner, because this wants to be a little bit finer work, really. Where we can. really get that shadow and sometimes if you start a particular kind of you want to show that it's rounded you need to continue that and if you think that's too stark you can go back in there instead of having a, a, a bright shadow you can mellow it and soften it out again this is the beauty of the watercolour paper you can soften anything out so you don't have a stark line if you don't want a bright defining You've got to be a bit careful because you are picking up colour as you go along. Just twist it to a point. So you just want a damp brush. And just... Manipulate it now. Of course, if you did that with the the watercolor, a normal color book, your page will just disintegrate. But we can kind of really give it a bit of a a bit of a rub and get some nice highlights on there. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Erin. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Yes, um, it's the call radiant, and they're not light fast, whereas um, these Hydrus Fine Art are light fast. These are professional watercolours, light fast, permanent pigment. Um, whereas the, the, the thank you, the radiant ones, they have some gorgeous colours like teals and and turquoises and um, lots of gorgeous gorgeous fake what i would call fake colors are absolutely beautiful but they are not they'll be fine for the color books but they are not um professional watercolors whereas these are um and when you think that you know just put a few drops out i still got tons left the only one that's nearly gone the red one i had to redo but i mean look at all the red that i did so i've got like four spots but there's still it's fresh in there now uh, there's five drops in there so you can say probably five drops of color of red um, and the couple of drops of brown I've, I've actually gone into there and one of the drops of yellow that I was going to mix with the greens and I didn't I mixed it with the olive to give the olive colors that's the yellow that I've used so I've used a few drops that's all Oh, thank you. It's my fault. My that I have fibro fog, um, and sometimes it's bad, and sometimes it's really bad. 
So yes, and and I wouldn't mind. A lady said it earlier this morning when I first went on, and I can't remember. So apologies. I have a memory like a sieve. Yeah, they're called Radiant, um, and they're still gorgeous. Um, but um, these these watercolors. I mean, some people squirt the colors out and push them on watercolors. Um, have a look at videos. Watch lots and lots of YouTube videos about all sorts of things that I use because that's what I do. And then I talk myself into it. And I talk myself out of it. And then. I have birthdays coming up, but I think I'm about six birthdays ahead and ten, ten Christmases. But I, I do that. But you, I watch lots of different people using them in lots of different ways. Now, I am, I say, supposedly a professional artist, but I don't class myself as that because I don't sell any work. And now I've got arthritis. The chances of me selling work is... is, is my, my artwork is, is gone. So... I just colour in. So I do have a lot of old professional art supplies, but that's because I did my degree five years ago. So when you're doing a degree, you want a few of the goodies. Um, but again, you know, the, the, uh, the, the designer gouache was actually in a set, but my, my professional watercolours, I've bought six main colours. Occasionally, if I see them on offer, I'll buy a, a, a purple uh, or a green, but not very often. I like making my own greens. I love making my own greens. The only ones I really like are the, the and I do this with the, the Peerless and the Hydrus, and there's a few others that have a really good thalo type colour and a thalo blue and a thalo green, and I like those for really bright seascapes but not reality just colouring in yes they're dye, dye based I think the peerless are dye based as well but again very strong very very strong um, and I've used them almost neat so uh, which again you can do in here I've not used them like a watercolour I've used them like I normally use them strong colours and building up more and more layers so if I pan out a little bit and just see how long I've been going. I'm just coming up to 50 minutes. Oh, thank you, King God. If I pan out, you can see that by not rushing, and you can also see how I work as well, by not rushing, there seems to be this deep colour here. So I can kind of do all sorts in here. Um, but it gives me a sense of what, what I want to do with this area, whereas you might have thought of a red, um, a red and a green. But I like this ring of red here, this natural ring of red, so I might do a different colour. So I've got some more ivy, so I'm going to put the ivy down at the background and then probably do her last. I may just do the skin because... She's a pixie and they don't sit in sunlight all the time. So she's going to have very pale coloured skin. And I have a bit of a, a red going on there. So I need a bit bigger brush for that. Just make, you always make sure that your brush is, is clean. Now nothing's coming off there. So that's quite nice. Um, I'm running out of space on here. Now I do have a white and a black, but I want to keep this palette. I want to dry it and keep it, but I will make, you see, it's gone into like a tacky, a tacky colour, um, sticky. That's because it's pure. I'm just going to touch, just a touch of that colour in there. Now that, thank you, darling. That is a bit pink. That is a bit pink, but she's, she's kind of, and I'm just going to touch this yellow over here. This is why really you should do this on a palette here like this. Uh, but I'm using this as my main palette. So I'm going to touch that. Um, it's not too bad. If I watered it down a bit, I think I could... I could use it. Yeah, it's... I can use it as a base colour because I just want to get a base colour down. So it's a very kind of ivory cream so there's no warmth there there's no warmth 
it's um I don't think there's any warmth really but I just want to get a set a colour down so that will be her arm and then we have her neck and the, the lovely thing is of course you can you've got this beautiful brush which is just oozing colour out quite nicely and then we've got that little bit there so that's just and her hands curled round so I don't think I've missed apart from of course the face so what we have now is a fairly watered down version and of course what I need to do is not go over the eyeballs because they will be white so I've just gone over one and I'm not going to go over the highlight of the lip either and I've left the little pearls there so I can build on that but I've just given her a bit of warm so if I can zoom in she's now got she's she's not white she's she's got form and here they they've got kind of that translucent look yes i need some more peerless as well but i have decided i'm going to be good i'm just buying the um, which ones that I want? Oh, excuse me. Hubby just bought me a wonderful cup of warm tea because it, it's very cold in this room very quickly. It's all glass. Oh, excuse the slap. So I shall pan out and you can see again that. Oops, no, I'm pressing the wrong button. Just, just. Hopefully you can see with the lights. I might have to put a bit more light on now because the. So you can see now. That's my. That's all the colours that I've used. And that's the palette. So she's she's coming along. So I've got now to do maybe a background, and then I'll probably do the wings last. Um, I think she's probably going to be a brunette because I think, or a redhead, but there's enough red because, again, there's enough red now. I've got that lovely red ring that's going round there. So I think, I think she would have brown hair because there's a lot of shadow. It's a darker tone. She would have been a blonde. It would have been more like this very light or this so so I think I'm going to give her uh, some brunette locks shall we say oops and there's bright red on that one which I can now get rid of so that's why the baby wipes quite good because it doesn't disintegrate doesn't matter how many times you're rubbing it it does not disintegrate um, I just keep folding it in half and finding a very, another bit. <laughs> it gets very wet eventually, but you can see you get some good. Grabs all the colour out. Oh, sorry, I've missed the chat, guys. Thanks, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for nattering. 
If anybody's got any questions, pop them in caps. I missed it. Um, what was I going to do then? I was going to do something and I've completely forgotten what it was. I know what I was going to do. So I've got two browns, but because I've used one, this is the one that goes bitty. It always goes bitty. I think it's just something to do with the nature of the um, the pigment. Browns are always a pest um, in any in any medium, and this is. But if you look now, there's no bits in that. It's completely disappeared, and it's become a really nice nut brown. So I think I might just use that neat. It's quite rich. Just want to be a little bit wetter. So if they ever go bitty, you just uh, and they go dry. They do go dry. Just bring them back to life. I'm not quite sure what that is. I thought it was a hooped earring, but she hasn't got a hooped earring on the other side. So I'm a bit confused. Um, Again, this brush is fully loaded. I'm hopefully not going to do too much damage being too dark. I'm hoping you can still see the grayscale through. I mean, there isn't any reason why you can't just do one colour because that grayscale will, will do wonders. Maybe this break this is a little bit big this brush. Just got to be a bit careful you have a dribble because I don't want it too wet, but I want it a little bit, but that's a better brush. Sometimes you've just got to change brushes. And this brown is allowing all that grayscale to do all its work. I thought that was the skin, but I messed that one up. So, And in theory, the hair is there as well. In theory, but I'm not quite sure, so I'm going to leave that. So we've got a little bit more leaf going on up here. Yes, Suzanne, it's always the browns. It's because it's the, the nature of the... It's an earthy thing, I think. It's something to do with earth. It's like mud. Mud dries and goes to, to dust, but then you it goes back again. And I'm pretty sure that's got the same thing. It's, 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 the, it's the nature of the pigment. That's what it is. But we might look in my little brown, my little colour book, and ask to see... Uh, and, and read if it is um, I'm sure the fields book that I had last time will tell me I've gone a little bit lighter there because I do want to give that could have been the dress not her hair but never mind there should be a highlight on there now, I can put some nice rich tones in this. But of course, this is the warmer brown than the brown used for the toadstools. That's a cooler, a cooler warm, a cooler tan. So it seems, oh, I've missed a bit there, so I mustn't go over that because that's. So I'm going to point and take that. Now, I'm sure that so that's kind of again a flat color, but it's done its job. I can go back in there, create some shadows which will make the lightest ones pop out again, even though I just threw that color over the top.
I'm just looking for some more bits and pieces. So I'm just clean the brush. Yes, I'll have a look when we I'll go through some colours with that little book. The um, the fields, the fields book of colour, and uh, he'll explain as a chemist why it does that. But it means it's good pigment. And that's basically what it really means, I think. So. We've got a bit further with her. If I hold it up like that, you can see, you can probably see better. So I've got my, um, I have to be sideways. But there's some fairly, fairly nice colours in there. That brown has just, just darkened the face, um, around their face to make the face pop out. And then when we get this dark shade here, this is going to be the focal point. I messed up one of the eyeballs, but I'm sure that'll be fine. Um, Again, I'll do something with that skin tone. I just wanted to give some kind of thing over it so it looks okay. So that's the end of part three of uh, Linda Ravenscroft's day. Uh, it's the page is called Daydreams, uh, but it's fairies and fantasy art. The uh, watercolor, watercolor book. Thank you for watching.